All right, loves, it's your boy here, and we are back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. And as you guys can see, we got this new Double Special Heroes banner today, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're going to break it down unit by unit and color by color, so maybe if you're on the fence about deciding to summon on this, you'll have a better idea after the video. Now, just a quick little update there. We are getting a Legendary Banner trailer tomorrow. So I find it very sus that they would drop a rather good double special banner, by the way. I think this is way better than the one we had last time. So they're dropping this as obvious bait because the legendary trailer tomorrow is going to presumably have something good on it. And you guys already know the deal. I actually summoned a ton of copies of this rearmed Ophelia because I wanted her to give her Kanto control. And Kanto Control, Medeus is going to be on the banner tomorrow, or the trailer tomorrow. So, that's my plan, but there's actually a substantial amount of good units on this banner that we need to go ahead and address. So, let's go ahead and start at red, and this is one of the things I really love when they do, is put both of the demote characters on the same color. So, we have that here. We have the... What was this, a Summer Leon? I can't remember if this was Summer Leon or, like, what was his theme again? He's got a poncho on there, but I actually don't remember where he's from. And then we have this Bride Cecilia as well. She is a demote, so this Leon is not too shabby. Actually, he'd be pretty solid with the Arcane Sword if you had a spare copy of Arcane Lift to give him that weapon. So he's really tanky. As you can see, he's got 37 defense and 39 res at level 40 neutral IVs. So pretty solid. Speed is a dump stat, but you don't need speed if you're running that arcane sword because I think it gives you a guaranteed follow-up. He has attack and defense ideal 3 and lull attack and defense 3, which is a pretty good fodder skill, actually. Very strong for a 4-star demo to have that. And then his own weapon, let's see here, gives him... Attack and defense of 5 and a guaranteed follow-up if he's in two spaces of an ally. Yeah, that, that's okay, <laughs> but it's certainly not as good as the Arcane Sword, which does that and then a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So, I actually think he would be a solid merge project if you were interested and you wanted to build him up. Just because we have the Arcane Sword and it's a really good inherit for him. Okay, then we have the Bride Cecilia. <laughs> Funny enough, we also have an Arcane Red Tome, which is pretty good. Although, I'm not too sure if this would be the ideal unit to give it to. She is a Cav, though, and Cavalry, with their three-range mobility, do have a, a bit of an edge they can take over other units when they're able to ramp specials like that. So, the Arcane Tome we have does minus one special trigger, and it also gives you minus one special cooldown count at the start of turn one. So, those two combo together, you could just insta-charge a Glimmer or a Moonbow with her. Wouldn't be too shabby. And her actual weapon gives her attack and res up 5 and a bonus to her attack and res based on the bonus on her already attack and res. So basically she just has attack and res bonus doubler by the looks of it if she's over 25% HP. Not as good as the arcane red tome, but okay, we'll, we'll take it I guess. She has a double rally plus skill, she's got attack and res ruse and then rouse attack and res 3. So as far as fodder goes, the rally plus is nice. The other two skills, though, kind of falling off uh, until we get Rouse Attack and Res 4. We actually might. <laughs> I don't remember if we have that one as a level 4, but if we do, then this level 3 is a good pickup skill to get that one easier. Ruses, though, have pretty much just died. <laughs> There's not really too many reasons to run Ruse skills anymore. There's way easier ways that you can debuff the enemies now. So, I wouldn't put as much stock in this Cecilia, but I, d I do think the Leon is... A solid merch project if you're interested okay now we get to the good stuff so we're moving on to blue up next and we have the summer Lynn now say what you want about Lynn as an actual unit if you want to say she's good or if she's bad I'm of the camp that she's theoretically good if you can somehow get this encounter on her which is possible in summoner to duels whenever we have that captain seal that gives you distant counter and all stats of six but when that's not the case, I feel like the Halloween female Corrin is just better than her. Because you can run the Distant Counter seal for that Corrin. And then she has a finish in the A skill. She has... Does she have Shield Pulse? I think she actually has a... 
one of those new dragon level 4 skills, be it Dragon's Ire or Dragon's Wrath level 4. And then for her C, I don't remember what she had there, but it doesn't really matter. That Corrin basically does everything this Lin does, but slightly better. Unless we're talking about that one season in Summoner Duels where we have the Disencounter seal. So Lin is kind of good, but she's got some issues. And the main thing about her is that she comes with godlike reflexes, and she's the only unit that has it. So, a very good special, and it can't be turned off by nullification of DR, which we just got a massive skill that does that, which is Special Spiral 4. So, a very strong skill for any of your tanks at this point. I feel like this and, like, Aegis and Pavis are the two new ways to go for your DR, because they can't be turned off by specials anymore. But, other than that, like, this Lin doesn't really have the greatest of fodder. She has godlike reflexes and I guess speed smoke 4. Actually, you could get both of those in one shot, which is pretty good. But would I recommend summoning for this Lin just for fodder or just for use? I I don't know. I she's not really my type of unit. I, my preference is more for like high mobility and insane player phase potential, whereas this Lin is just a really strong all-around unit. So it's going to be up to you if you want to summon on blue to try and get her. All right, then she is accompanied by the Thief Kath over here. <laughs> Kath with that really good-looking artwork. So Kath has a special Kanto effect on her weapon, Kanto 3x3. Three three. So after she attacks an enemy, she can use Kanto within a 3x3 three three column centered around herself, which is pretty interesting. I mean, they, they did a lot of different Kanto effects on the banner that she came out on, but we're going to talk about the really good one in just a sec. So other than that, she just gets, let's see here, attacking speed of 6, 15% bonus damage based on speed, and then she has essentially Binding Necklace. <laughs> that was one of the nastiest skills about Freya. I, I don't know if I would consider it as nasty anymore, although I do think blue buff effects are starting to make a comeback. So, you'll probably be able to get some solid use out of this. I don't think she's a bad unit necessarily. I just think she was a little overshadowed by a couple of facts. First of all, when this Thief banner came out, we were like a week away or a week or two away from Choose Your Legends 6 coming out. And it was like, are, are you really going to spend your orb stash on that Thief banner when we know there's some hot fire on the horizon? A lot of people decided to just skip the Thief banner for Choose Your Legends, and I can't really say that I blame them, but <laughs> perhaps not Kath, but there was a unit on there that I think is definitely worthwhile to summon. As far as fodder goes, Kath has got Attack and Speed Push 4, Attack and Rest Snag 3, and then Blue Feud. These Feud skills have fallen off. Well, can I really say they've fallen off when they were really never in? I don't know. I... Colorless Feud was okay a little bit, but I, I don't know. I've, I've never really thought these Feud skills were anything too crazy. And Attack and Speed Push 4 is great, but there's so many Attack and Speed Boosting A skills that I, I don't really know if you need that specifically anymore. So Blue is okay. I mean, there's some solid things on Blue you could get if you want, but that's going to be up to you. All right, next up we have Green, which I think is certainly a lot better than Blue. So, we have the, what was this again, Summer, no, not Summer, the Heat Tana, or Flame Tana and Peony, <laughs> a duo that has absolutely nothing to do with each other. I don't know why these two were paired up, and more specifically, I don't even know why they were on that banner either, because <laughs> everyone on that Flame banner was just ripped and shredded, and then you got these two who are, <laughs> like, just soft little marshmallows i don't know i i don't know the thought process but regardless we have this tana here her weapon effect is pretty cool because she can actually give kanto one to allies within two spaces at the start of the turn and as far as combat goes she gets attack and speed up six she nullifies an enemy follow-up and then she does a little bit of an attack reduction on the enemy as well so it, it's almost like she's trying to soften up the counter attack that she's going to be taking so that her next attack can finish the enemies off and with her level of defenses which isn't necessarily bad i'm not too sure if that's going to work out too well 
the units nowadays are hitting so hard that I, I'm not too sure this unit really has the potential to survive a counter hit. And regardless of all that, even they gave her wind sweep, which is like, okay, so we're just going to have her attack and do the null follow up and wind sweep combo. So she doesn't even have to worry about getting counter hit. And I'm just like scratching my head. Why, why wouldn't they just let her reduce their defense instead so that she hits harder? It's, it's a little bit weird, but I do think her giving Kanto 1 to the team is still a very solid effect and something that you can definitely make a lot of use out of. Now, for Fodder, she comes with Attack and Speed Catch 4, she's got Wind Sweep, and then she has Speed and Defense Hold. Not a bad hold skill, and Attack and Speed Catch 4 is pretty strong. So, for Fodder, they're not too shabby. Oh, I didn't even talk about their Harmonic skill. Let's take a look. So, they give Resonant Blades... And then they give it a second action to the ally with the highest HP in two spaces that is from the same titles. So pretty good. We have uh, Sacred Stones here and Fire Emblem Heroes. There's no end to the amount of good units from Fire Emblem Heroes. Sacred Stones I don't think has too many standouts. We did just get the refine for Duo Ephraim though. So he, he wouldn't be too bad. I guess there's also Brave Erica. She's... Uh, I mean, yeah, she's still good for sure, but... She's a little bit, it's kind of a shock that I have to say this, but I, I feel like she's a little bit old now, <laughs> Brave Erica. That's crazy. But yeah, basically, there are solid units to go ahead and dance with that duo skill. And the two range dance effect on the harmonic skills, I think is probably the best one overall. I, I can't think of a harmonic effect that I like better, although treachery is pretty good too. So, there's a couple, like, it depends on what you need. If you need a second action, this one's obviously really good, and you always need more actions, but sometimes more damage can be a little better. Okay, they are accompanied by this Dimitri over here, the Summer Dimitri, Mr. Abs himself. <laughs> this guy is pretty good. He's one of the better Brave Attack melee units, because, first of all, he's a cavalry type, and he also comes with Atrocity, which is giving him a massive attack bonus anyway. So you give this guy the ability to brave attack with atrocity and it gets really gross. He can hit really hard. And on top of that, he does have Kanto Rem plus one enabled. He's got minus one special trigger. He gets all stats of five. And then his brave attack is based on a speed check, which he will most likely be able to win. So pretty good stuff from this Dimitri. He's got attack and speed catch four again. And then he has speed and defense menace. So, solid fodder skills, but my recommendation would be if you summon this guy, just keep him. He is a very strong unit to use. So, you got a 1-2 punch combo here on green. I think both of the green units are pretty solid. Now, we're going to wrap things up with colorless, and this is where the creme de la creme, so to speak, of this banner exists. So, we have Thief Nina right here. I love this unit. Th this might actually be my favorite unit released this year. I use them everywhere, all the time, and no exceptions. I, I, I summoned to get this unit when that Thief banner dropped, knowing that Choose Your Legends 4 was coming out, or Choose Your Legends 6 was coming out. And I, I think a lot of people skipped them, just thinking that Choose Your Legends was going to be better, but... If I gotta be honest with you guys, I feel like this unit was better than all of the other Choose Your Legends units besides Seleth. Like, I like this Nina better than Byleth. I like them definitely better than Tiki. And I... I like them about equally with Krom, but I do think I... This unit has more potential to be a threat than Krom most of the time. Because unlike Krom, they're just... They just do everything they need to do right away. Whereas Krom needs a little bit of setup to get to his peak. And then Brave Seleth just cheats. <laughs> I mean, that guy is dumb. So, of course, he's in a realm all by himself. But I, I do think Thief Nino was better than most a majority of the Choose Your Legends banner. So, this unit is... Do I want to call them a must-have? I, I don't know if I want to call them a must-have, but you got to understand, this unit has the highest reach in the entire game with the highest canto effect in the entire game so their duo skill is able to grant them one extra movement which is pretty busted considering they're already a cavalry range type so that gives them six 
range of reach, which no other unit is able to do that. And on top of that, their Canto recall ability is allowing them to just Canto back to the original square that they started on at the start of the turn. So you have them attack somebody, and then you can Canto them all the way back to turn one to square one. It's like, essentially, they have Canto 5, or not Canto 5, like Canto 4, <laughs> which nobody even comes close to having that. So this is a very devastating unit on the player phase. They have also the potential to get either a Broadleaf fan effect or a Blades Home effect, depending on which effect would be stronger. So if you happen to have more blue buffs active than the opponents have red debuffs active, you're going to get the Blades Home effect and then vice versa. So it's not like they slouch on damage either. They hit really hard, especially when they need to. And they come with lethality, of course, being a dagger type unit. So that just gives them even more stopping power when they need it. So for fodder, they've got attack and speed catch four, chill defense and res three, and colorless feud three. Chill defense and res three isn't particularly amazing. Now that we're getting more of the gold border B skills, I think you're probably better off going with some of those. But attack and speed catch four is still pretty solid overall. So. They may not be the best in terms of fodder. They, they do have lethality, though. I guess lethality, there, there has to be something to be said about that. But if you pull a copy of this unit, then you just use them. Use them, enjoy them, love them. They are going to be amazing in literally every single mode. Aether Raids, Summoner Duels, Auto Battling in Tempest Trial. I've found that the CPU it seems to suck a lot less when they're using this unit. So... It's just an all-around amazing unit to summon. And then finally, we have Niffle over here, Summer Niffle, who is one of the more destructive player phase melee types in the game. This unit, prior to us getting Embla, who can shut down save skills, this unit was my go-to for my Chaos Season defense team because there's not a lot of near-save units that can really tank her too well. She has minus one special trigger. She gets attack and speed up six. She has half a null follow-up, the one that makes her able to attack the foes without being wary fightered. And then also, if her speed is better than the foes by five, she gets a fire sweep effect, so they cannot counterattack her. And on top of that, she also has adaptive damage, which is like the icing on the cake for a melee-type unit to be able to do that. So this is a very solid player phase unit. On top of that, they also have, or she also has Domain of Ice, to give a support effect to allies in two spaces and also herself. So <laughs> this unit kind of has like multi-purpose effects there. We have speed and res near trace and attack and speed catch four as well for fodder. Both pretty solid, although speed and res near trace is only particularly good for dragon type units. And there's not too many dragon calf melee type units that you would want to give that to. I guess legendary Ninian, but outside of that, there's really not too many. So this unit, I think, is equally as worthwhile to get as the Thief Nina if you don't have them. So if you're going to be summoning on this banner, I would recommend absolutely summoning on Colorless. And then follow that up by Green. Green is in second place. And then we have Blue and then finally Red. Although, like I said, this particular demote is a pretty solid one. So that's going to wrap us up for the coverage on this Double Special Heroes banner. Hope you guys enjoyed it and look forward to tomorrow where we're going to get the Legendary Heroes trailer and we're going to take a look at what that unit is capable of.